Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm really excited to test this brand new solar panel from Renogy. This is their new 200 watt shadow flux solar panel. Now this solar panel is special because it's actually designed for partial shading performance. This is the first solar panel that Renogy has released with this technology. Now instead of using traditional monocrystalline or perk cells, this uses an upgraded N-type cell or Topcon cell, giving it more efficiency and a smaller footprint. Now if you look closer at each solar cell, you'll see that each one has 16 bus bars. This gives it better hotspot performance and lower resistance, which translates into more wattage. And so the main purpose of this video is to see how many watts we can get from this in the current solar conditions, and then we'll do some partial shading tests to see what the true power output is. We'll compare it to a standard 200 watt Renogy solar panel. So right here, I have the 200 watt Shadow Flux solar panel lined up right next to a 200 watt standard monocrystalline solar panel from Renogy, and you can see there is a massive size difference. Now I actually wanted to see the size difference between these two panels. The 200 watt flex panel measures 29 by 63 or is a total of 1827 square inches. The shadow flex 200 panel is 30 inches by 50 inches or about 1500 square inches even. So that means that the shadow flex is smaller by about 327 square inches or about 17.9% smaller. That's pretty impressive. Now I made sure that both of these solar panels are angled properly at the sun before testing so we can get peak power and I did that using the can trick where you basically set the can on top of the solar panel and you move the solar panel around until the shadow of the can goes away knowing that you're perfectly angled at the sun. Now what about the actual solar conditions that we'll be testing in today? Well it's a very clear day, there are no clouds, there's no haze around 40 degrees. It's a few days after winter solstice, so the solar is pretty short these days, and you have to angle the solar panels pretty high to get full power. Now for the equipment that we'll be using to test the solar panels today, we'll be using the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus, and on each solar panel I have an XT60i adapter, so we'll get max power. So let's plug in each solar panel to see what we get. Now I first connected up the normal 200 watt Renogy solar panel and we are getting 184 watts, which is pretty decent for this time of year. So now I've unplugged the standard 200 watt panel and I've connected in the Shadow Flux 200 panel and we are getting 193 to 192 watts, so a little bit more power from that newer panel. Now I think it's important to mention that these Renogy 200 watt panels, these are over a year old and they've been outdoors every single day. And you can see they still are putting out good power and the ETFE coating is still holding up strong. So now that we've tested each solar panel, now I wanna see how they perform in partial shading. So I've taken a ladder and I've shaded two cells on the normal 200 watt solar panel. So let's see the wattage output with those two cells shaded. So we've dropped down from 184 watts all the way down to 143 watts. So a significant loss of power just for a little bit of shade on the solar panel. So now I've moved the ladder from shading two cells up to eight cells. So let's see how much power we lose as we're shading eight of these cells. So now the power has dropped down to 92 to 94 watts input. So you can see that a little bit of shade on the panel affects the output quite a bit. Now in the final partial shading test on the standard 200 watt panel, I've cast a shadow across the entire solar panel. This usually reduces the power output completely or to very low wattage. So let's see what's happening. So now with that shading, we are down to about 19 watts or 18 watts charging input. So you can see a significant loss of power just for having a portion of the solar panel shaded. So now I wanna do the same partial shading test on the Shadow Flux 200. So I've started by covering up two of the solar cells. Now, just as a reminder, the Shadow Flux was seeing around 193 watts in full sun. Now with two of those cells covered up, we are getting 183 watts to 184 watts. So not that much loss in power. So now I moved the ladder to cover up eight of the solar cells. So let's see how much power we're getting with eight of these cells covered. So if you look at the screen, we are getting 157 to 158 watts input with eight of those solar cells covered up. So quite the improvement over the standard 200 watt solar panel. Now for the final partial shading test on the Shadow Flux 200, I have a board going across the entire solar panel. Remember on the previous test for the standard solar panel, we got under 20 watts of output. So let's see what we're getting now with this panel. So if we look closer at the screen, we are charging at about 117 to 118 watts input. That is almost six times the amount of power that we are getting in the same test on the standard 200 watt solar panel. 
So I want to end the video with one last little test here. So most solar panels, if you cover up more than half of them, they're going to produce zero power whatsoever. So I just want to see what happens with the shadow flux. I've taken this solar panel here, covered up more than half of the solar panel. Let's see how much power we're getting. Okay, guys, check out the screen here. We are getting uh, about 42 to 40, 50 watts. Wow, it's jumping around a little bit, but still, we are still seeing power from this solar panel. So I definitely say it's performing as advertised. Now, I thought it'd be beneficial to make a graph showing the performance of both these solar panels side by side. So up on the screen, you'll see the performance of the traditional 200 watt panel and the 200 watt shadow flux solar panel. So you can see the power drops off much more quickly with the traditional solar panel in partial shading conditions. It's important to note that this solar panel has a slightly higher voltage than a traditional 12 volt solar panel. Taking a look at the spec sheet on the back of the panel, you'll see that it has an open circuit voltage of 36.5 volts and an optimum operating voltage of 31.3 volts. You'll want to make sure that your solar charge controller or power station can handle this level of voltage before connecting everything together. For example, some power stations only allow up to 28 volts. So this has too much voltage for those smaller power stations. So just check the owner's manual and make sure this is compatible before connecting it up to a smaller model. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the pricing for the Shadow Flux 200. Now typically you're going to spend more money for a shade tolerant solar panel, so let's check it out. So the MSRP is $299 or around $1.49 per watt. Now it's currently on sale for $239 or around $1.19 per watt, so just a little bit more than one of their standard 12 volt solar panels. Now guys, when I found out about this solar panel, I was really excited to test it out because not only is it a glass rigid panel that's durable, it's gonna last a lot longer than the ETFE portable solar panels or flexible options, is the actual price is really good compared to other shade tolerant solar panels. For example, the Shade Stopper 100 watt panel, it's priced around $190. And this is a 200 watt panel for just a little bit more money. And if you look at the SIGS 100 watt panel, that one's priced at like 230 to $240. So you can pick up this panel and get double the power output as a SIGS solar panel. So uh, I'm interested to see what you guys have to think about this panel. It performed really well in the testing today. So if you're looking for a solar panel that performs really well in partial shading, I think you should definitely check out the Shadow Flux solar panel from Renogy. Now guys, thank you so much for checking out the video. A special thanks to Renogy for sending out this solar panel for testing. Once I saw it on their website, I definitely wanted to get my hands on it to see how it performs. So they did send it out for this video. So thumbs up to them for supporting the channel. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section. We'll see you guys in the next video.